Welcome back, everybody, to the Geek Boutique broadcast brought to you by the Geeks and Company. You are not seeing things. Do not adjust your sets. Don't change that channel. Yes, I am, in fact, here by myself today. JS, our my partner in crime, my brothers in arms, is off to Quebec for his birthday for this particular week. So he is not here this week. Uh, you may then be asking yourself, well, you don't have JS, but why is it just you? I did have somebody lined up to join me, and then they also had to cancel at the last minute as well. So by then, so here's here's the sequence of events. Initially, we booked uh, Alan, our good friend Alan Henry, who is a performance capture artist that we were going to have back on the podcast to talk about his new movie, Godzilla Kong, The New Empire. Uh, and then he had to cancel last minute. Uh, and I shouldn't say cancel. I should say reschedule because he's part of a currently running production hello uh mr myers good to see you christina you as well uh he's part of a current production and he's on call and unfortunately while he's on call he see the thing is here we're thursday at seven there in new zealand he's friday at noon so he's in the middle of his work day and he could get called into the set at any moment right now so he had to cancel so i reached out to our fellow Geeks and Company person, editor Megan, and asked if she would like to join me on the podcast after learning that JS could not be on because it is his birthday. He is traveling to Quebec. Uh, he and his mother actually share a birthday, everybody. Aww. So he's going to Quebec to celebrate their birthdays together, which means once editor Megan also canceled at the last minute because, and I shit you not, she's getting her hair done. It's just me. I had no one to grab at the very last minute. So here we are. We're going to be doing a Geekly update. Now, that may lead to another question. We said months ago that we weren't doing Geekly updates on the Geek Boutique anymore because we were looking to do a new podcast that was going to be called the Geekly World News. And we were going to focus on it once a week, just Jess and I talking about whatever stuff had happened in the world of Geek for that time period. And as you can see, after months of planning and talking, we, we've not done that. So, and we're, by the way, we're no closer to doing that than we were months ago when we talked about it. We have lives, man. It's just Tim and I. So like, it's, it's hard. Yes. Everybody wishing JS happy birthday. Absolutely. I think he's turning, I think he's 56 or 57 this year, whatever it is. So, uh, you can always grab me Jeff says, Jamie, I, I put it out into the main chat that you're in that I was looking for somebody to co-host the podcast with me today. And uh, you suggested Rob, who, by the way, I don't know if he's, he's even read that, let alone responded, but he certainly didn't say, yeah, put me on. <laughs> so if you were looking to be on, you should have said what I said. Hey, what am I? Jeff Chop Suey says, Andrew Saxon. I want to make sure you guys understand, like, this is in the last, like, 15 minutes that I needed somebody to come on the podcast with me. And by then, I'm going to be like, hey, we're going to talk about, like, several months worth of geek news. Are, are you going to be ready to go in 15 minutes? Uh, that didn't seem really fair to do to anybody. So guess what, kids? Here we are. <laughs> So what I'm going to be relying on is you guys to help with the topic. This week, haha, solo podcast is this Monday, says Myers Corp. Uh, of course, who does this? Someone does this every week. Someone just comes on and talks geek and nerd shit by themselves every week. That seems slightly psychopathic. That seems kind of deranged. I'm not going to lie, but uh, you should be watching our boy Myers Corp Creations there on the Monday Night Nerd here on this very YouTube, just not on our channel, on his channel. So don't watch it here. You go watch it there. Although you can watch myself and JS, and I believe we had Rob on that one time too, on his podcast talking about shit. So uh, should have just showed up at Rob's house is what Jamie C says. Yeah, I, I understand you all live, you know, close to each other, but I don't. So uh, I am, uh, you know, I'm three, three and a half hours away from you guys. I'm in London. They're in Oshawa region. I shouldn't say because they get mad when I say Oshawa because like neither, none of them actually, I don't think actually live in Oshawa, Oshawa. They're all in like little towns surrounding Oshawa, but I don't know, man. I'm not from there. I don't know the area. So I just say Oshawa and that's, that's kind of how it is. So uh, while I have you guys here at the beginning of the first five minutes, uh, I do want to mention one more time uh, and I'm probably going to mention this. Uh, as we go through uh, each individual week, 
Star Wars Day. So May the 4th, episode two, May the 4th be with you is going to be uh, Saturday, May the 4th, obviously, here in London at London Brewing Co-op. That's at, I believe, 521 Burbrook Place is the actual address. It starts at 3 o'clock. It's running to 11 o'clock. We're having Star Wars themed bingo at 4 o'clock. We're having Star Wars themed trivia at 7 o'clock. We're having a live band that's going to come on, I think, around 9 o'clock and play some geeky stuff as well. Uh, we also have photo opportunities out front. May the Force Strikes Back. There we go. Thank you, JS. I appreciate that. May the Force Strikes Back. Uh, we are going to have a bunch of photo ops out in the front. We've got some backdrops that we're putting up. We're going to put up some decorations as well. Uh, there's going to be activities like there were last year with, you know, inflatable lightsabers and all that kind of jazz. Uh, there is also going to be raffles once again this year. We've got some local businesses that have donated prizes. So we're going to be setting up little prize packages and little prize pools. Uh, big, huge shout out to It's an Onion, who's in the chat right now. He's also donating some Star Wars toys. We're going to make some little gift baskets out of those. Uh, JS has also picked up a couple of things. We're going to make some more gift baskets, but we've got gifts from Junction Climbing again, from London Comic Con donating a couple of passes. Uh, Grand Theater is donating a couple of passes here in London. Uh, what else have we got? Heroes is going to be pitching in with some stuff. So there's going to be lots of great prizes that we're going to be selling raffle tickets to all of the raffle tickets, much like last year, all the funds are going to be going to dad club London, who is going to be working with Ronald McDonald house charities. On top of that, there's going to be a new beer this year. It is going to be a light lemon lager it is going to be called twin sons. JS has been cranking out some amazing stuff and content. I can't wait for you guys to see it. There's going to be some merch involved as well, but he's also designed the label for the twin sons beer and it looks dope as shit and it's by the way guys not i'm spilling some beans here it's not just going to be like it was last year with like a i don't have one here with me but like a silver can with like a stuck on label on it like it's they've ordered cans specifically it's gonna be a black can with this really cool orange label so i'm gonna say i'm not gonna give everything away but it looks dope <laughs> harrison is asking where uncle js sorry jeff that's that's okay that's okay. I don't mind. I'm asking the same thing. Where's Where's Uncle JS? That's going to call him from now on, Uncle JS. Um, what Star Wars says Christina? I don't know. I'm a Star Trek guy myself. I don't even like these Star Wars things. Uh, and yes, thank you, Iska Voice, uh, Ali, keeping us uh, on track here. Not only will there be, sorry, raffle tickets to the charity, fifty cents from every beer sold of the Twin Suns beer also going to donate the charity it's the first time this year none of the proceeds from the beer last year went to the charity this year 50 cents per sale of the beer is going to go towards the charity so have a few when you're there and take a six or a 12 pack home with you you'll be doing a good cause and also for the first time this year we will have vendors so if you came last year when you came in the front there was a parking lot area toward the front and then there's a you go inside there's a seating area a stage area the bar area another seating area in the back and then a doorway that leads to a covered patio a long skinny covered patio that's got 10 different uh picnic tables set up at it those picnic tables are going to end up being vendor spots so we've got room for 10 vendors. Right now, I have nine vendors booked into that area. So they'll be selling a wide range and variety of stuff. The table fees for the vendors, 100% of those table fees are also going to the charity, to Ronald McDonald House via Dad Club. So last year, we raised nearly $500 for Ronald McDonald House charities. And that was strictly through the raffle ticket sales. Nothing else. No other money coming in or changing hands at that event last year went towards the charity we raised nearly 500 dollars. this year we're getting money from the vendor booths we're getting money from the beer sales and we're also getting money from the raffle ticket sales and all of that 100 percent of that is all going towards the charity so i'm hoping that we can at least double what we did last year hopefully we'll have a goal of at least a thousand dollars that we can raise and donate on behalf of the geeks and company and london brewing co-op to ronald mcdonald house charities via dad club london so come out and by the way i've had some people asking i signed a new vendor today they were like well do i have to wear like a star wars costume or whatever no star wars is the theme it's not the requirement i'm not going to have like a wookie standing at the door and checking creds and making sure you're in it no in fact somebody asked me today they're like can i come in my star trek uniform absolutely 
please do. I think that's amazing. If I didn't already have a really cool costume I was going to be wearing, I would 100% come in my Captain Pike. 100%. So you don't have to come in Star Trek. You don't have to come in Star Wars. You don't have to come in any costume whatsoever. If you have a costume, please wear it. We are going for a theme, and we want to get as many costume people out as we can. And if your costume is Star Wars, that's fantastic. Let's do that. But if you don't or you can't, still come in a costume, man. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. We're going to drink some beer. Uh, Nate is saying she's coming in her Tuscan Warrior. That's amazing. I can't wait to see it. Uh, and Andrew is reminding us of something as well. It is free comic book day as well after all. And that is true. So free comic book day is the first Saturday of every month, which just happens to be, sorry, the first Saturday of every May, not every month. Oh my God. Could you imagine it was the first Saturday of every month? Woo. Um, producer Jen says Jedi Knight, Christopher Pike. You know what? It's, it's not a terrible idea. Um, the first Saturday in May is free comic book day. So that is how we're going to start our day. The geeks are going to invade downtown London and celebrate for free comic book day but we're are we are going to go in our star wars cosplay so that we can help promote the event at the same time we are probably going to get to the venue around one o'clock the venue opens at 10 so like there's lots of time to get there early get a good spot maybe have a pre-noon beer hey i'm not here to judge man you it's the weekend you do whatever you want to do but the official start time is three the bingo starts at four the trivia starts at seven and of course the live music will start after that Guys, it's going to be a great time. It was a great time last year, and that was the first year that we had done it. So this year, it can only be bigger and better. We've got a lot more people coming this year amongst the faithful and amongst the groups that we've spoken to. Not that we didn't have a good turnout of people last year, but we are having a, we're having people come and drive in from Toronto and all kinds of different places and some really crazily talented cosplayers coming in, too, with their absolutely ridiculous Star Wars cosplay. So... Be mindful of that. Be there for that. Uh, like I said, even if you can't dress up, just come out and support the cause. If nothing else, just come out to support the cause. Buy a couple of raffle tickets, grab a couple of beers, maybe buy something from some of our vendors and and you're good. So, and yes, and Jamie's making a good point. It does make it easier that it's a Saturday. Absolutely. Yeah, no question at all. Uh, she's saying bingo. Yes, the bingo will be uh, picture-based. So instead of it, like, be, I'm not going to be up there in my Stormtrooper outfit going B11, B 11. That's not what's, how it's going to work. We're going to have a screen and there's going to be pictures of different Star Wars related things. And then your bingo card will have corresponding pictographs of the various Star Wars things. And you just, you still make a bingo. Oh, 69, Jamie. Come on, man. Come on. Low hanging fruit. You'll notice I didn't say B12 because it's, it was just too easy. It was, it was just too easy. So yes. So the Star Wars bingo will go off at four o'clock and then the trivia. So the same people. Can you still use that voice? I can. In fact, yes. It will be like Chewbacca. Chewbacca. There just won't be a number attached. Um, yes. And the trivia this year at 7 o'clock will be hosted by the same people that hosted it last year. So it's going to be very similar. I'm assuming. I did. We, we were in the back with the big words. Yeah. We were in the back uh, doing the podcast live while... The trivia was happening and we'll be doing the same thing again so we'll be talking to a lot of the vendors back there and everything else but it looked like the trivia went very very well last year there's no reason why it shouldn't go well this year i think it'll be a slightly different crowd though because they're still doing their own trivia on thursday at that venue as they normally would just last year it lined up because it was also on a thursday this year it's on a saturday so they're coming back two days later to do trivia again this time have a star wars base so I'm guessing it's still going to go well. It's a Saturday at a brewery. It's still going to be busy regardless. It's not just going to be as geeks. It's going to be a bunch of muggles and normies there too. So hopefully we, we can all get along and have a good time. All right. 15 minutes I've spent talking about the event that we have coming up. We're just very excited about it this time, guys. Uh, things are... Oh, and I mentioned the merch. You know, maybe I won't spill the beans. I'm only... I will merely say there's probably going to be some merch involved there as well. Some t-shirts and such and hoodies maybe. So keep your eye out for specific merch directly related to this event. Keep your, keep your eyes peeled for that. Otherwise, what are we here for this week? We're here for a geekly update. Like we've talked about before, we haven't done one of these in a while because we were going to do our own podcast that was going to center on geekly updates. 
Oh, we just haven't had a chance to do that yet because you know we both have lives and there's so much going on right now and and planning the Star Wars thing and then we had TCC and I'm making all these excuses as to why we haven't done it but I mean it's it's been a lot lately so I just want to make sure you guys understand we're not ignoring it on purpose I would like to think it's going to happen but pop culture topic number one Jeff's hair looking great today dude well thank you man I I appreciate that I don't know why my hair is always such a my hair or facial and or facial hair is a topic of conversation entirely too much. I am noticing though how much more gray is coming in. Every time I take the beard off, like I did for Toronto Comic Con, and then it comes back in, there's just so much more gray in it now. It's getting to a point where it really is more gray than brown anymore. And it's it's making me kind of sad a little bit. Oh so gray. Yep. And the beard is back. Yes, yes, indeed. The beard is back. It's it, it only leaves when it has to leave. It doesn't, I don't. I don't normally go around without it. So I haven't even uploaded my TCC picks yet. Life is busy. Hey, man, I get it. Uh, life's been busy for us, too. I've got something every single weekend for like the next like five or six weekends in a row. So it's I get it, man. And and then, of course, like I said, we got to make the fourth thing, too. So <clears throat> that's what happens when you're an old fart, says the guy that's about to turn 56. OK, OK, JS. OK, just because you're wearing it better than me. That doesn't mean everyone knows He's going to kill me when he gets back. Uh, Geekly World News, guys. I'm curious as to what you guys are seeing and thinking about the world of geek out there now and what's happening. I can tell you there's a few different things that have sort of happened, even kind of like in the last 24 hours, that sort of has everybody up in a tizzy and an uproar. Maybe not the last 24 hours, but in the last couple of days. Uh, the Fallout television series on Amazon Prime has debuted. The reviews are in, at least as far as Rotten Tomatoes goes, and it looks like it's a banger. Um, I'm going to be the first to admit, guys, I am not a Fallout guy. The last time I played Fallout, it was probably like, I don't know, like Fallout New Vegas. Like it would have been like way, way back, like 20 years ago was probably the last time I played a Fallout game. But um, I did see the trailers for it, and I mean, it looked cool as far as that goes, and it definitely looked like they're spending some money. Uh, which Amazon does tend to do on occasion when it comes to doing a TV show. And I mean, it just looks, it looks really good. Uh, collaborated saying I watched 20 minutes before work. Freaking amazing. Yeah. I'm hearing the first two episodes are really good. Um, but yeah, as far as a rating goes, I just saw this earlier today. Where is it now? Oh, anyways, 93% on Rotten Tomatoes as it stands right now for the Fallout series. So I would say it's doing pretty well as far as that goes. Um, and apparently they've already got, yeah, here we go. Fallout series, TV series reviews, right? Uh, and apparently they've already got season two planned out. So 93% on Rotten Tomatoes, that's, that's pretty damn good, guys. I mean, if you haven't seen this, I would definitely recommend checking it out for sure. Um, and if you have, as if anybody has seen this, let us know in the chat, if you've taken the time to watch it, I know people are like, this is my weekend plan. I'm just going to binge the show. Cause apparently Amazon just dropped the whole thing all at one time. So, and I am curious to hear from people that are familiar with the property, as opposed to plebs like me that are not all that familiar with fallout. I'm curious of people that do know the property, how they feel about it. If it seems like. I don't know where it kind of takes place in the overall Fallout timeline because Fallout's been around for so long, but I want to know if they're sort of being true to, like, is it part of a continuing story? Is it more like a, you know, like an adaptation of a specific part of the game series or or where does it fall and, and how does it work and 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 how does it make your little, your little Fallout? Where's Pretty Nerdy Crystal? If she was in here, she's a huge, huge Fallout nerd. She'd be able to tell us. Uh, Fallout looks wicked, but I have never played any of the games other than the first one. So that's, so I would like to check it out as a person that has nothing invested in it. Right. So I, I wouldn't mind at least going into it with fresh eyes and being like, is this just a good show or not? Um, but I am curious to hear from the other side, like people that are really, really, cause I mean, I find that I know a couple of people, Paul is another one. Zappa props is another one there. He's, he's right there. Look at that. It's like, I, it's like I summoned him. It's like I manifested Zappa props huge huge fallout guy i'm really enjoying true of the games i mean if the fallout folks are telling you it's good it's probably good right so uh i played uh, one two three nothing after yeah like i said my fallout is is a long long time ago uh toxic fox saying i didn't realize it had dropped all i'll have to start it tonight yeah i mean 
there's only so many hours in a day, but if it's good, I think it's only eight episodes as well, right? Like I think it's a rather, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe I'll give it a shot. Uh, Meghan, our, our, our dear friend is saying, my heart is still broken from X-Men last night. Now I'm assuming this is the X-Men 97, the, the new cartoon that's the the takeoff on, on Disney Plus from, see, this is another thing. I always, <laughs> I have to be judicious about what I can spend time on anymore, I find. I just, I'm so old. I'm just like, I don't, I, I can't. Like if I get invested, like Andre and, and Myers are, are talking about AEW right now. They're talking about wrestling. And back in my wild, impetuous youth, in, impetuous youth and into my 20s, I was really, really big into wrestling way too big like spending way too much time on it and i'm caught i'm avoiding it now because i know if i start getting back into it i'm gonna do the exact same thing and it's gonna take over my whole life and i already have cosplay for that i don't need another thing that does that i don't need something that's monopolizing all my time that and hockey are the two big things that already monopolize my time i can't have something else that's gonna do that i know wrestling will do that but I am hearing good things about Fallout. Uh, love the first episode. Kyle McLaughlin is great. And Ella Purnell is fantastic, says Marcy. That's cool. That's good to know. Again, I know you guys are big Fallout fans. So hearing the Fallout fans say it's good and they're enjoying it, that's that's that. I think that bodes well for everybody. So uh, if, you've got, if you've got Amazon Prime and now, if you don't mind watching some ads, <sighs> bullshit. Uh, yeah, give it a shot. Give it a watch. And give us some feedback as we're going forward. Maybe on next week's or the week after. Let us know what you think of it, especially if you're if you're like me and you don't know the the, the property and you're check, checking it out. Tell me if it's good or not. Uh, but X Men ninety seven, yeah. So is everybody watched? So this is on Disney Plus, is my understanding. Yes, as you can tell, I've not I've not watched any of it. I did watch the cartoon back in the day, like everybody watched the X Men cartoon back in the day. Despite the sort of I don't want to say dodgy animation, but comparatively to what you had, like. The Spider-Man stuff was amazing, the uh, the Spider-Man uh, animated show. And then, of course, you had, you know, Justice League and, and Batman, the animated series, and Superman. The anim I loved those, the DC ones in particular. Uh, I just felt like the animation and the storytelling was a lot better. But the X-Men stuff, the X-Men was just so compelling back in the day, the cartoon included. So I'm curious as to what the new one looks like. Because it looks like they're trying to sort of honor the original look and feel of the animation but it also looks like they've kind of gone in a subtly different direction not like what if where it's this weird amalgamation between like computer graphic style animation and hand-drawn animation like it kind of still looks like it has a hand-drawn feel but it's definitely not the same rough edges i guess you would say like it looks a little more clean and polished i guess than the than the cartoon did back in the 90s i don't know um Nate is saying, I love that comic Lachlan is having a resurrection of his career as we all watched the old Dune recently. We did watch the old Dune recently, and I still enjoyed the old Dune. Uh, it's 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 not the the greatest movie uh, of its time, but and it's definitely a movie of its time. But it it's still it's still it's still decent. Uh, funny you say, what if? Is there is some there's some recent news? What if? I'm still rewatching the '92 series for a refresher. I'm up to '94. Says Nate, that's very cool. Honor it with the animation and Easter eggs everywhere if you're a fan. Okay, so I mean, that makes sense, especially since it's a Marvel thing. That's kind of what Marvel does. You know, they're always hitting you with the, the cameos and the Easter eggs and the little callbacks and stuff. In fact, that type of thing reminds me of watching um, uh, Lower Decks. And there is some Star Trek news that we're going to be sharing as well. I just don't want to lose everybody that's in here before I start talking about Trek. But Lower Decks is very much the same thing where there's so many Easter eggs throughout every single episode that harkens back to so many different treks that have come out that if you're a fan you're like ah, ah like there's a lot of that right so uh it's giving me a reason to pull my rogue suit out actually yeah your rogue is pretty badass i think the one blood drive that we did uh toxic you came out in in the rogue and it was yeah it's badass so absolutely get that out uh i don't want to be the spoiler since megan avery but someone pops up from what if in the x-men cartoon Someone pops up from what if in the X-Men cartoon? Okay. That's cool, I guess. Oh, all right. Cool. Okay. From which season season one or season two? Don't you're not spoiling anything, but from which season of what if? Because now I'm curious. See, I wasn't gonna watch it. See, I wasn't gonna do that. Both. Oh. Well, that actually does narrow it down a bit. All right, you know what? I'm not going to ask any more questions because now we are. If I think I feel like I narrow it down any further, we are going to be getting to spoiler territory. So 
Never mind. I'm not saying another word. But that's cool. That's that's good that they're finding a way to tie things. Again, that's what Marvel does, right? They tie things in together. Sometimes it works fantastically. Sometimes it doesn't. But it sounds like in this case, it's working. People are enjoying the show. I'm seeing everybody talk about X-Men 97. If you don't know what we're talking about, that's what we're talking about. It's a continuation, I guess you would say, of the animated show, the hand-drawn animated show from back in the 90s. It's on Disney Plus because, of course, Disney now owns the Marvel properties. And that's where that cartoon is showing. So, yeah. Check it out. I don't know a lot of people that have seen it, but people that are watching it telling me that they're enjoying it. So that's cool. I'm liking it. Speaking of Star Trek, let's lose the 13 people that are in here right now. Star Trek is in the same kind of position that Star Wars is in, although it's been even longer for Star Trek. A lot of what Star Trek has been doing lately has been on the small screen through streaming on TV. Shows like Discovery, Strange New Worlds, Lower Decks, Picard, the upcoming Section 31 movie, the upcoming Starfleet Academy. It's cranberry uh, cocktail. It's not just cranberry juice. It's cranberry cocktail. No, I do not have like a urinary tract infection or whatever it is. It's just I, I enjoy the I enjoy the cranberry cocktail. Um, so Star Trek, very similar to Star Wars. They just haven't done a lot on the movie screen lately. And much like Star Wars has recently announced... The Mandalorian and Grogu movie that's going to be getting made and coming out. You're also now getting a new Star Trek movie that's going to be coming out. It was announced, I believe, today. It's targeting a release next year, and it is going to be some type of an origin film. So my understanding is it is not going to be uh, in the Kelvin timeline. So that is the J.J. Abrams films that started with 2009 Star Trek and then went into Into Darkness and then Star Trek uh, Beyond. Uh, it is going to be a new thing. Now, I still don't know if it's going to be like in the main prime timeline or if it's going to be like in a different timeline altogether. But from what I understand, it's looking to unfold somewhere in the late 22nd or early 23rd century. And that's a, a, a part of the Trek universe that hasn't really been explored a whole lot. So apparently that's happening as opposed to the long gestation of Star Trek four in the for the fourth film in the Kelvin timeline that's got like Chris Pine and Zachary Kinto and Carl Urban and Zoe Saldana and that crew and, and Simon Pegg and such. So that crew apparently is still on hold. They're still talking that that movie's going to happen, but I'm a bad nerd. The only Trek I've seen is the newer movies. That doesn't make you a bad nerd. At least you've watched those. You're fine. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, is in that discovery time frame. No, JS. So my understanding is just the original discovery was 10 years before Kirk's Enterprise. So, which is why we meet Spock and and Pike and, and that kind of stuff. So I this looks like it's some sort of an origin story. So my guess is it even predates Enterprise, like the show Enterprise. So interesting announcement with the pending sale of the star trek ip on the table i didn't know that the star trek ip was i wonder if that's why that got announced uh, to help us uh, you know sweeten the coffers or or up the price or whatever so it's not happening says nada as in this the star trek ip sale that would I, what's the what is that brand worth how would you i that to me that seems like flirting with like how would you quantify? I mean, I shouldn't say that they quantify. They four billion was what Star Wars was worth. Like, I guess they could quantify Star Trek. <clears throat> if you can quantify Star Wars and you can quantify Marvel, I'm sure you can. And Pixar, I'm sure you can quantify Star Trek. But man, alive, that's it's. It, you're talking something that's been around since the '60s. Like it, that's such a watch Disney buy it, Meghan. I mean, the only reason I would be down for Disney buying it. And by the way, there's there's a whole litany of other reasons here on the other side that I would not want Disney to buy it. But the reason on this side that I want Disney to buy it is we might finally be able to get a Star Wars slash Star Trek crossover that we've all wanted our entire lives but watch disney buy it no no thank you no uh fourth kelvin movie not happening says nada last time they talked to chris pine he seemed to, to think it was still alive in some way shape or form so uh i don't know i guess we'll see uh, I know it would be hard to get all those people back into the studio and get them paying and get them making stuff. And, and again, with each subsequent Star Trek movie, I believe in the Kelvin timeline made less money than the last. So that would make it difficult to to want to continue on. But I feel like for something like that, too, like those three movies came out within relatively short order of each other, I want to say. 
And I feel like with a franchise like that, the, the more the bigger gap there is between, you know, the last film that maybe didn't do as well and the next film, it feels like a reunion almost. It feels like an like it's 10 years on, the crew reunites for one last adventure. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like that little bit, it's almost like the Fast and the Furious franchise, right? Like it, it kind of peaked early and then faded off. And then they did that one movie. I don't know. I don't watch the series, but they did one movie that kind of brought it right back up again because there was like a, a a gap in between where they had a couple of weak ones or whatever. You know what I mean? So sometimes they can kind of play with it like that and sort of bring it back up into prominence if it's been off screens for a while, but then they bring that crew back because then people are like, oh, we're just happy to see these people one more time type of thing. So <clears throat> um, no one wants a Star Wars, Star Trek crossover. Excuse me, miss. I just said that I did. Right. I mean, back in my back in my time, you couldn't like both Star Trek and Star Wars. You had to choose one or the other. Like it was Coke and fucking Pepsi or whatever. Like back in my in my wild, impetuous youth, you, you couldn't say you liked both. You Well, I shouldn't say that you had to pick a preference. You had to say either you were a Trekkie or you were a Star Wars person. You, you couldn't be like, well, I, I love them both. You had to be like, no, you got to choose. Back in those dim dark days. Now, you know, with the advent of this this silly internet and social media and stuff, you, you can love both. And if they do, we're going to get a Trek park. So, yeah, but I'd probably have to get on a plane to enjoy it. And I'm not doing that. So it's not real any motivation for me to go. But, hey, a Trek park would be cool. Like an actual, you know, big. And you were a Trekkie. I was a Trekkie, but I still do. I live Star Wars. JSA and you were a Trekkie. Yeah, but I, I loved Star Wars, man. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you, you can drive ding dong. Guys, this is the this is the level of command that I respect. Sorry, the level of respect that I command within the podcast of the cosplay community. You can drive ding dong, says Meg Han. Yes, but I'm not going to drive 30 hours there and 30 hours back to go to a theme park. It's just not, not what's going to happen. So thank you, though. So this ding dong is not not taking on that that bit of uh speaking of crossovers anybody that's sort of in our age group crank up your your little 80s hearts they're doing a crossover with the transformers and gi joe this got released this news piece got released today at two o'clock I guess it was hinted at in Rise of the Beasts. I've not seen Rise of the Beasts, so I don't know. I kind of gave up on Transformers after how bad uh, the, the second one was. But Paramount Pictures made it official today. The G.I. Joes and the Autobots are doing a team-up movie, which is being set up at the studio. It's based on a storyline from the 1980s Marvel published comics inspired by the toy line. They don't have a filmmaker attached yet, but Steven Spielberg is going to executive produce it. And they got producers, you know, um, uh, uh, Lorenzo Di Bonaventura, uh, Michael Bay, Tom DeSanto. Dom, they're all returning. Uh, they've always been independent franchises, and they've both had live action films. Uh, the Transformers have seven, and G.I. Joe had three. Uh, I don't think I've seen any of those G.I. Joe films, by the way. Uh, and I've already said I only saw two of the Transformers movies. But I mean, I don't know, man. Like, is this something that we want? It's I don't. I don't know one is in your age group. That's a lie. JS is 57 today or tomorrow. So clearly he's in my age group. Uh, Michael Icon is not here right now. How dare he? Michael's not here. So uh, there are people. Nada is in our age group. Listen, Meg Han, it's not all you friggin' millennials and shit. It's uh, some of us oldies are in here too. Yes, yeah, not just in the comic anymore. Uh, they've been talking about this for ages. They have, but. I didn't think there was going to be ever going to be any movement on it because I mean, right now I don't feel like either film franchise is in a great place. Like, I don't know how well rise of the beast did at the box office, but I, I, I don't know. I don't remember hearing a lot about it. So I'm, I mean, I can look it up, I guess, but uh, he's aging very rapidly. JS. Yeah. He looks great though. Doesn't he for a 62 year old? I think he looks fantastic, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Let's look up what kind of box office we got out of Rise of the Beast. Because now I'm curious. 
Because I'm, sh- I don't even know there was three GI Joe movies. Oh, I guess Snake Eyes, right? Did Snake Eyes do all right? I don't even know. He's a Benjamin, but the last Transformers was great. I, okay. I know you liked it, but did it do well financially? Especially compared to like those early Transformers movies, made just such a ridiculous amount of money. Like they were billion dollar films, and then I don't remember which one that had it kind of fall off a cliff, but. I am curious as to what kind of money Rise of the Beast made. Uh, well, domestically, it grossed $157 million. So I'm guessing that's not great. Uh, I don't, I can't see a worldwide gross for whatever we're, oh, worldwide. Uh, no, that's all, that's the whole, that's not. That's not for that. That's just for this. Okay. So I don't know how much it made worldwide, but uh, as far as domestic goes, it made less than $160 million in its run. So I'm going to guess it was maybe not that great as far as what it made. I I don't know. I know that films tend to do well in China, so maybe it did okay there. $439 million. There you go. Going to be 100 by the time this podcast ends. Maybe. Maybe. I actually love the Bumblebee movies. Uh, uh, Marcy saying, I'm with you, Jeff. Megan saying, I actually love the Bumblebee movie. Uh, I didn't realize y'all were that old. Makes me feel a little, says, says Toxic Fox. Thanks, thanks, Toxic. That's great. Cons are aging us all, is what Nate is saying. Uh, prematurely, more exhausting every year. I mean, yes, fair. Um, Victoria Brown saying, I'm just shocked there's seven of them. What, seven old people in this in this group? Yeah, there's at least seven. 439 million US. Uh, I would imagine that's, I mean, that's decent. I don't know what kind of budget the film had. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, what do you, what do you, what are you going to, what are you going to do? I don't know that either, either franchise is in a, is in a place where doing a crossover would make sense. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know what a crossover would look like. I don't know if the Snake Eyes movie did very well or not. I'm sure that second G.I. Joe movie probably didn't, although I'm sure the first one did. I need to start a convention wellness booth and offer 15-minute massages, says, uh, says collaborated cosplayer friend Groot in London. I, I, I don't think anybody would be mad. I think that would, although not, if, not while you're wearing Groot, because that'd be weird and uncomfortable. $200 million budget is what JS is saying. Yeah. So if it made its money back, it only barely made its money back. And it certainly didn't make a lot of money. So I don't know. Will it help revitalize both of those movie franchises and then and then have that take off? I don't know. Maybe. Speaking of crossovers, though, I think we'd be a little bit remiss not to at least talk a little bit about the newest MonsterVerse, which is what they're calling this universe, by the way, the uh, newest MonsterVerse film, which is Godzilla Kong, The New Empire. That's what we were going to be talking today with Alan Henry, who played a big part in that role. So we're not going to do like a huge deep dive into that film. I have seen the film. I watched the film in anticipation of getting to see and talk to Alan today. But again, unfortunately, due to circumstances, we could not do that. So I will say that franchise keeps chucking along, man. Like the new one's doing very well business wise. It's not a critical darling, but none of them have been critical darlings because that's it's not like a, a taut, tense, you know, layered dramatic thriller with this this compelling human element story. It's giant fucking monsters smashing the shit out of each other. That's that's really all it is. It's a spectacle film, right? So, and I would recommend if you are gonna see it, you should probably go see it at the theater. Um, much like when I went and saw Dune 2, which we'll talk about here in a second as well, uh, going to see Godzilla and Kong, the new empire on the big screen, the movie is beautiful. I will, without giving anything away, a lot of the movie does take place in hollow earth, like in, in the, in the, in the realm where some of the Titans live. Uh, and that made it this, this, the landscapes, the, you know, the scenery down there is, is compelling it's beautiful it's gorgeous and it's rendered beautifully and that movie they did for 135 million dollars and so much of that movie is monsters so it's really kong's story it's 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 a continuation of kong's story from kong skull island and then godzilla versus kong they still keep the focus on the giant monkey for good reason it's it's the easiest character to to relate to amongst all the monsters that you're going to see 
So it really is his story, and uh, and somehow they were still able to pull that film off for $135,000. Uh, $135, $135, Just a guy in a monkey suit running around. $135 million. Uh, in this day and age where all the movies are two and $250 million, 135 for a giant monster movie, uh, it's pretty good. And it's doing very well at the box office. And it seems to have some legs because it's got like an A cinema score, which means people coming out of it are saying that they enjoyed it. My son and I went and saw it last weekend, and he loved the shit out of it. I said to him, hey, what was your favorite part? And he just said, the fight scenes, of which there are a lot. So I don't know how they do that film for $135 million, but here we are. Toxic Fox saying, I'm trying to convince my dad to go see it with me. I want to see it so bad. It's a, it's a good time. It's a good time. Don't go in expecting this really, like I said, this layered character-driven story. It ain't that. It's 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 an hour of 45 minutes of, of giant monsters being the shit out of each other. And it's glorious. <laughs> the humans are there basically for to do two things. Exposition and comic relief. Exposition because none of the monsters can talk. And comic relief just because you got to have some humor sprinkled in amongst all the monster bashing. So, yeah. I would recommend going to check it out. But go in with your eyes. Go in knowing that's what you're getting. You're getting just a giant fun monster movie. You're not getting something that's the high art of cinema that's that's if you're going in expecting that you're going to be sorely disappointed but i would still recommend going to check it out because it is a lot of fun <clears throat> excuse me uh for those of you on the video game side that maybe were a fan of this franchise and saw the first film five nights at freddy's 2 has finally been greenlit and they're talking about bringing it out uh the fall of 2025 uh universal and blumhouse are gearing up for the sequel so they were talking to the president of universal jim Orr, and he uh used uh, CinemaCon. just happened uh apparently and that's where a lot of this news is coming out of they did a presentation it's in vegas and he said that five nights at freddy's 2 is in the works for release in fall of 2025 um now the the cool part about this franchise in particular is one it's based on a very very popular video game series that gained a lot of its popularity by the way by having people on youtube playing it and 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 streaming it or whatever so that's where a lot of the popularity of the video game came from um and the video game features these animatronics that come to life and and do bad things to people well instead of having this thing just full of chock full of cgi for the first film they actually built the animatronics and had them as actual physical moving things and as a result it only cost $20 million to make the film. Well, it made twice that it's opening weekend domestically and it grossed worldwide just shy of $300 million. So it was a huge hit for the studio. They made a lot of money and now they're going to do a second one. Well, duh. Is it still awesome? Even if it's old? Yes. I expect nothing fancy. I'm still happy either way. My Godzilla VHS. Yeah, of course. Willie's Wonderland all over again is saying collaborating. Yes. So Willie's Wonderland, only in this case, Willie's Wonderland was a ripoff, uh, I believe with Nick Cage, a ripoff of the Five Nights at Freddy's video game series because they took a little bit longer to put the Five Nights at Freddy's uh, movie together uh, starring uh, the gentleman that was in, I believe, all the Hunger Games movie. He was Pita. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. And again, it's, it's kind of like, it's almost like Godzilla Kong, like, a lot of the focus ends up being on the animatronics, which I think is cool. And the story behind the animatronics, which is told through these different dream sequences in the film that he's seeing. And, and, and there's, there's, there's people in the dreams that are allegories for the, the animatronics. So again, same thing for the five nights of Freddy's, the first movie, is it high art? No, it's actually kind of ridiculous, but the cool part is because the animatronics are actually there, which I didn't know by the way, going in. So, when I went and saw it with my son, who is a big fan of the franchise, as I came out of the movie, I was like, wow, that's some of the best CGI I've, CGI I've ever seen. Like, it seemed like those guys were really there. And then I did like five seconds of research on the internet. I'm like, oh, that's that's because they were there. So Josh Hutcherson, thank you, Victoria Brown. Josh Hutcherson was the gentleman's name that starred in Five Nights at Freddy's. So there is going to be a Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Andrew saying, Willie's Wonderland is amazing. Cage doesn't say a single line in it. How, how is that amazing then that's i don't get some classic cage delivery i don't get some some cheese ball delivery of of nick cage I, if he's not screaming don't not the bees ah not the bees i don't want to see it that's not hashtag not my nick cage how do you cast nick cage's like and not have him talk 
What? No. That's what? That'd be like casting Christopher Walken in something and not having him speak. Come on, man. You have to have him talk. He has such a unique way of speaking. His whole career is based on this. Let him cook. Let them let the guy talk for goodness sakes. I don't know. It's coming out next uh next year, fall of next year. I think that's gonna be cool. Uh I skipped over one piece that I did want to talk about, by the way, and it was supposed to tie into the Monsterverse stuff, but then I skipped over it. So pretend we didn't just talk about that. Pretend we're still talking about the Monsterverse stuff. Uh speaking of Monsterverse, uh Apple put together a show called Monarch Legacy of Monsters that starred Kurt Russell and Wyatt Russell. Uh, in two different time periods. And it basically told the story of, of how Monarch came to be. And Monarch was the, the overarching government body that you saw in the MonsterVerse films that were the ones keeping track of and, and essentially like fighting Godzilla and Kong and Mothra and the Mutos and all that jazz and all those films, and King Ghidorah, whatever. So this television show on Apple sort of told the story of how Monarch came to be. And it told it in a unique fashion where Kurt Russell played the current day version of himself, like of his character. And then his son, Wyatt Russell played him back in the fifties or whatever, when Monarch came to be. So it was a really cool thing that I don't think I've seen a lot of where you had a father and son playing essentially the same character in two different time periods and same thing. They spent some money. So it's, it's, it's an impressive looking show. Uh, there's lots of creatures in it, including, by the way, Godzilla. Godzilla does appear in Monarch Legacy of Monsters. In fact, Godzilla is kind of at the heart of the story itself of Godzilla Legacy, or sorry, of Monarch Legacy of Monsters. And now, and by the way, the show comes out, it gets rave reviews, and apparently it does well for Apple on their streaming service, and then nothing. For three months, there's been no news about anything about the show, and then finally they've announced that they are renewing Monarch Legacy of Monsters for a second season. And now they're also doing a deal with Legendary Entertainment, who's the production company that makes the MonsterVerse films, for multiple spinoffs based on that franchise. So it, this is not going to be the only television show that's going to be based in the MonsterVerse. So this is something I did want to, to kind of talk about uh, with Alan about as well, but I, I want to get your guys' opinion. It seems like ever since the MCU kind of got really started up back in 2008 with Iron Man, and then when it started to ramp up and it really hit in 2010, I, 2010, I want to say, with uh, the Avengers, uh, or 2011, whenever the Avengers came out, ever since then, everybody's been trying to do their own connected universe. And most of that, those connected universes have absolutely failed. Not enough monsters in it, says Marcy. Well, you know, I thought it was pretty good as far as the show goes for a television show. This monster universe, monster versus they're calling it, is, seems to be one of the few that have tried to put together some sort of a shared universe that's working. Not quite to the extent that the MCU is, because again, we're only, I believe, what, five films in or six films in now? But they did choose to kind of, at least the two main protagonists, I guess you could say, protagonist antagonist i mean especially with godzilla he's kind of an anti-hero because he does smash a lot of things and kill a lot of people while he's fighting the other big bad guys but you've got the two protagonists that are introduced in their own films and now you're seeing them together but now you're seeing pieces and parts starting starting built out into television series again much like with the mcu so why is the monster verse verse working whereas so many of these other pretenders to the mcu that were trying to copy that formula kind of came and went and didn't work right you you were supposed to have a we were supposed to have a dark universe from universal that was supposed to have all of the the classic monsters your frankenstein your mummy your visible man your werewolf your whatever and after tom cruise's the mummy bombed it kind of all just went away and they just scrapped it of course dc has had all of their own issues across the entire spectrum trying to get like a shared universe into people's houses, into people's heads, off the ground. And, and they had some, again, some initial success, but it fell off a cliff in a giant fucking hurry. And it just never seemed to recover. I could name a bunch of others as well that, that, that people that have even talked about trying to do like a shared universe or something like that. But this MonsterVerse thing seems to be working. Again, we are still kind of a little bit in early times. There's only been five films or six films, whatever it is. But now there's also been a successful TV show. Now they're going to spin that off into other TV shows. 
And now they are talking about doing another Godzilla and Kong movie, this time with a more focus on Godzilla. Now that this film, The New Empire, is doing so well financially, it was going to depend on this film doing well. It is. So it looks like they're going to do a third film with the two of them together. I don't know what they'll do after that, but assuming that it makes money again, they're going to keep doing this. It's not going to be going away anytime soon, especially now that there's going to be another season of Monarch and now more shows spinning off of that. So what is it about the monster verse that's working where a lot of those other shared universes that tried to copy the MCU formula didn't? We, I think we've been, I think we've all established what DC did wrong. I mean, everybody was kind of ragging on them when they first came out that they shouldn't copy Marvel. And, and now that they failed miserably, everybody was like, you probably should have copied Marvel having each of their heroes introduced in their own film and then team them all up. It's not really what happened, unfortunately. And I think that really suffered for it. I need more Mothra in my life. Give me Mothra. Well, I don't think I'm giving anything away because I'm pretty sure it was in the, um, pretty sure it was in the trailers, but go see the new film, Brittany, go see the new film. All the studios have a problem keeping their own canon intact, which is the lifeblood for nerd debate. Monster versus is, is uh, okay so far because it's a rinse and repeat method without canon breaking. Fair, fair point, Andrew. I feel like as far as canon goes, like, because let's be fair, even Marvel can be kind of dodgy with their canon, especially in some of those early movies where they maybe didn't really have like that big of an overarching plan where, and because we were on this journey and because we were, we hadn't seen anything like before, I think there was a lot of instances where we just kind of forgave it. We're just like, uh, okay, fine. Whatever. It wasn't that in the last one, but that's fine. We're just going to roll with it because I'm just loving what we're doing. But of course, like I said, no one had done it, but like it was a new thing. So we were all kind of on this journey together as we were going. But now that we've seen it and we've seen how it can work and how it can be successful, now we're, that's the measuring stick. So everything that's coming after, we're kind of holding up to the same standard. And when it's not hitting that standard, we're all like, well, well fuck this. We don't want this anymore. But MonsterVerse has gotten away with not being that way. Now, the nice thing about MonsterVerse, obviously, as opposed to maybe some of the other things, is that, yes, there is not just not just canon, but there's so much established media and cultural awareness in the zeitgeist of the two main characters in that universe, Godzilla and King Kong. You're probably talking about the two most iconic big monsters of all time. I don't even I don't even know how you would argue. So you have all of that rich history to build off of. So without, but without having to be handcuffed by it, because it seems like there's so many different iterations of both of those characters that you can sort of, you know, play around. Like when this movie was right before this movie came out, Godzilla minus one came out from Toho's from like a different studio, a different take on the same character that looked completely different than the Godzilla that we're getting in the MonsterVerse stuff. So I don't know if canon's necessarily the the key to the monster verse. I think in this case, it's you're getting to draw on a rich history, you're getting to use protagonists that everybody knows. But at the end of the day, you're just making entertaining movies. Like that's what Marvel did. Some of those movies are dumb, but they worked and they were entertaining as hell. And they just kept cranking the same movie out over and over and over again. But that movie was entertaining as shit. So we all watched them and there were bumps in the road like Thor the Dark World or Iron Man 2 or whatever. Like there were some of them that were not as entertaining, but because it wasn't necessary, because there was a journey we were going on, because there were so many steps, you could have one misstep and that's fine. When you've only got three movies in your universe and the third one stinks, uh, that's a problem. You you can't, you it's, it's going to be hard to recover from that. I'm saying that. And I think Iron Man two was the third, was the third MCU movie and it stunk. But again, you have already Jay, he's carrying that whole franchise on his back. He makes one misstep. People are like, that's eh, fine. He'll be fine. I'm arguing with myself. JS isn't here to argue with me. So I'm just going to argue with myself. Uh, Toxic Fox saying, uh, boyfriend just informed me he doesn't know who Mothra is. I think I need to replace him now. You, I mean, come on, man. Uh, yeah, I don't watch for good story all the time, Toxic Fox saying. Sometimes I just want pure nonsense and amusement. Yeah, and I think this is where some people get confused. They're always like, well, you know, it's it's it just turn your brain off. It's a popcorn. There, there are films where I, I get the turn the brain off moment. I really do, but I still want it to be, it's, it still has to be entertaining. Like it still has to, it can still be a good movie 
without having to be some deeply layered movie. It could just be a solid, entertaining film. If you were a child of my generation, there were so many action movies that came out in the 80s with Stallone and Schwarzenegger and Eddie Murphy and all this stuff. None of those movies were amazingly layered, character-driven movies. They were just solid 92 minutes of entertainment and excitement and violence and boobs, actually, for whatever reason. There was always random boobs in those 80s action movies. They would just stick them into one like scene or two scenes or whatever, and it would have nothing to do with anything. They would just be like, oh, boobs, and then you would just move on. It was just part of the process. What was I talking about? Anyways, yeah, just make it entertaining. Make it amusing. And yeah, sometimes you just want to be able to sit back and go, this is great. Sometimes you want to do that. You don't, not every movie, not every universe has to make you grind it out and think. Minus one was Toho Universe, so a rival to the Monster Universe. Cool. But you know what I'm saying, right? It's still the same character. They're both called Godzilla. They're both giant lizards looking things with atomic breath that are wrecking cities, right? Like, it's not like, it's not like one's like a pretender of the other. You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, it's not like a, it's not like a competing Jurassic Park franchise. It's one's called Godzilla and the other one's called Godzilla. Right. So I think that that can't do anything but help when you've got two franchises kind of going at the same time with the same character and they're both doing well, both financially and especially with minus one, minus one won a fucking Oscar for God's sakes for visual effects. So you know what I'm saying? You have an opportunity as long as this, the, the content that you're cranking out is good. I'm just saying Godzilla and Kong, in my opinion, have a leg up on some of these other quote unquote shared universes where they have a, a huge. They're part of the collective consciousness. Everybody know you'd have to go to a different planet to find somebody that doesn't know who King Kong and Godzilla are. Right. So you you get that built in you get a baked in not necessarily a fan base per se because the hardcores are going to come out and watch it anyway but but just people people just on the street just regular joes you can walk up to somebody and you can ask them who you know charles xavier is they may not be able to tell you who that is just a rando person on the street at the grocery store in line at the bank whatever if you ask them who godzilla is or king kong is they're going to know who those characters are they're just baked in so i think that absolutely helps with now, you, it could be argued the Dark Universe was the same way, you know, Wolfman and Frankenstein and Dracula and all that jazz. But just that when your very first movie stinks in your shared universe plans, yeah, it's you're all done, kids. You don't they don't just keep letting you do more, which does bring us, by the way, to the new DC that is coming out. It's now called Superman. We know that a recent rumor came out. And by the way, I want to give a special shout out to James Gunn. Because a rumor came out that Ultraman was going to be the lead bad guy in the Superman movie. For those of you that don't know, Ultraman is like an evil version of Superman. Because Lord knows we haven't had enough of that lately with Homelander and with Omni-Man and with whatever. He's, he's literally from a parallel universe that all of the Justice League are evil versions of themselves. And James Gunn was quick to jump onto social media. I don't know if it was Threads or Twitter or X or whatever the hell that crazy doofus Elon Musk is calling it now and said right away, this is not true. This is not. So he shot that down. No Ultraman. He's like Lex Luthor is the villain of the Superman movie that James Gunn is doing. James Gunn, hats off, sir. You don't have to be that accessible. You don't have to be going onto the internet every time a rumor comes out and being like, this is not true. That's cool. Because then you don't have geeks and nerds and losers like us sitting here. Like JS and I would have been talking about Ultraman for 30 minutes on this podcast, debating the pros and cons, talking about Earth 3, and just boring the tits off of all of you. But thankfully, James Gunn was like, oh, you idiots. No, Ultraman is not in the movie. He's not going to be the bad guy. And so that spares idiots like us from running our mouths, even though I've been doing that for the last 59 minutes talking about this stuff so i mean at the end of the day thanks james gunn we appreciate it please keep this up the accessibility that you're giving us to you while you're going through this process of making this movie and trying to bring this burgeoning universe again together for dc it's kind of cool you don't have to do that a lot nobody else is kevin feige is not on social media every day debunking rumors about the mcu he never has been he never will be he just tells his actors and his production crew not to say anything. And then Tom Holland goes and tells people shit anyways. But Kevin Feige, we don't have that kind of access to Kevin Feige. We never have. 
So having this kind of access, this kind of sort of like insight into what's going on, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Summer of Superman, please. I mean, I hope so, man. We talked about this before, guys. It's real thin on the ground this year for stuff because of the strikes that happened last year, right? Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, the only MCU movie coming out this year. And and uh, it's certainly an MCU movie based on the trailer. But I mean, I, I think we all know that this is not, you know, your main stream, I guess, or main line. This is still coming over from the Fox X-Men world. And, and I, it's pretty obvious, I think, too, that they're really going to be paying some lip service to those Fox characters and that Fox universe. It's going to be kind of like their swan song. That's what it looks to be anyways. I don't know why you bring Hugh Jackman back if it's not that. So <clears throat> it's 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 going to be an interesting year, man. Don't forget Craven. Yes. Uh, different universe, right? We're a three different Sony verse Marvel Marvel films, Spider films, Craven, Madam Web, which has already come out, uh, which I've tried to watch three times now and and cannot get through. Uh, and um, Venom three. So yes, those are all coming out. But again, not MCU movies, not tied into MCU at all. No Spider Man in any of those. So I don't know what's I don't know what the I don't know what the geek movie landscape is going to look like. Sorry, I'm late. Was napping off Miami. You have missed absolutely nothing, sir. I've literally just been running my mouth for the last hour. Slacker, <laughs> says Christina. Yes, Michael, you are forgiven. Absolutely. Uh, our good friend, Michael Icon, uh, just went and saw Madonna in Miami. I think he was in Miami for like five days or something like that. And looked like he was on the time of his life. So good on you. Good, sir. I hope you had a wonderful time. I hope the shows were amazing. Uh, he got a really kick-ass t-shirt out of the thing too. So, uh, guys, that is the geekly update. We didn't get to a lot of what I wanted to get to. And I did want to talk about specifically like more recent things. Cause I mean, talking about things from like two and three months ago, didn't seem like the best sort of move to make. Um, there was a couple of things I wanted to touch on. I did want to talk about the trailer drop, the teaser trailer drop for uh, the new Joker movie, Folly Adieu. Um, but again, I think by the time we get into that, we're already over an hour. Um, you know, guys, it's just me talking here. It's, it, there's, there's, there's no point in continuing to beat this dead horse. I did have the time of my life. Michael, I'm so glad. That's amazing. You got here just in time for me to sign off for the evening guys hopefully hopefully next week we are going to have our good friend alan henry on and we will be doing a deep dive into godzilla kong a new empire so toxic fox Brittany, if you're watching and the rest of you unless you want spoilers go see the movie i'm going to talk to alan ahead of time i'm going to try to make sure we don't at least spoil the ending of the movie but we're going to have to talk about specifics of the film especially based on what he's doing in the film as Kong, because as I mentioned before, there's a lot more Kong in this one. So make absolutely certain if you don't want spoilers, don't watch next week. But we are going to talk to Alan about other things. He doesn't just do Kong. He does other things as well. So it is going to be a broader scope. Maybe we can have like a little like spoiler tag. Maybe it'll be like the latter half. We'll talk about Godzilla Kong. And if you haven't seen it, you can just tune out at that point or whatever. But or if you're one of those people that just doesn't care about spoilers, then yeah then tune in and and watch the dude talk about playing a giant ape because i think that's going to be great uh once again i'm going to remind everybody if you haven't done so already please hit that subscribe button on youtube it helps us bring more content for you and it brings more eyeballs not just your balls but other eyeballs onto the product and then the other videos that we've got going on too uh, my little video my quick little video about uh, cosplaying spider-man has done very well js has a new video out talking about a show that he absolutely adores, Star Trek Discovery. That video is getting several hundred views now as well. So go ahead and check out our stuff. Like and comment on those too. Please tell your friends to subscribe as well. And hey, share it to your socials and just ask them, hey, just give these guys a subscribe. We're getting close to a goal that we're hoping to get to a little bit sooner than this, but we're slowly chugging along. So please go ahead and hit like and subscribe and, and throw a comment on the video as well. Uh, a final reminder, May the 4th. Hopefully we will see each and every one of you here in the chat at that event in london ontario saturday may the 4th 3 p.m until they kick us out i believe right around 11 o'clock bingo and raffles and prizes and trivia and live music and beer and beer and beer and beer ah so please join us for that otherwise if js was here he would tell you but he's not here so i'm going to tell you oh and by the way everybody message js and wish him a happy 62nd birthday by the way uh guys stay geeky We'll see you next week.
Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Geek Geek Podcast. Like always, if you prefer to listen to us, you can find us on all major podcast platforms. Now, make sure you don't forget to click that like and subscribe button, as well as the notification bell to make sure you never miss anything. 